If there's one more angle to Le Chatelier's principle that hasn't come up yet, and we're going to hit it now, and it has to do with gases and pressure. If you have a system with gases in it, like this one, nitrogen and hydrogen combining to form ammonia, a mole of gas takes up the same amount of space no matter how big or complicated or simple the gas is, and so a nitrogen, a mole of nitrogen takes up the same amount of space as a mole of hydrogen, and those take up the same amount of space as moles of ammonia. And so if you count how much space this system takes up on either side, you can see that on the left we have one, two, three, four moles worth of gas, meaning that would take up four units of volume. Whereas on the right, if you take those same atoms and rearrange them into the form on the right, ammonia, now they only take up two units of space because they're, we have more complicated molecules here. So this system can be like unpacked into a form that takes up a lot of room, or packed down into a form that takes up a lot less space. If you apply pressure to a system, it's like you're crowding the system and making it wish it was under less pressure. It's trying to get away from the pressure. That's the equivalent of avoiding a stress. The system, if it's under pressure, will think, if I move to this side, I'll take up less space. That will reduce the pressure that I'm under. It's like being in a crowded area and you squeeze in and try to make yourself smaller so that you don't get crowded so much. That's the equivalent of shifting over to this side. Later, when it's not crowded anymore and you have more space, then you can stretch out and take up more room because there is more room now. So for any system that has gases in it, increased pressure means the system will move or react to its bigger side, the side which contains more moles of gas. And I'm sorry, smaller side. Boy. Increased pressure means it'll go to its smaller side. It'll pack down and try to take up less space to get away from the pressure. If you lower the pressure, relax the pressure and let the gas expand, then it will expand and it will move or react to the larger side, the side where it can take up less space. If you give a gas space, it will expand and fill it up. So. What do they ask us about this? In the equilibrium example, what direction will the system shift if pressure is increased? They say they're doing it by decreasing the size of the reaction vessel, like you're, you've got a piston on top and you're compressing it down. We don't really care how they're increasing the pressure. As long as the pressure goes up, the system will go towards its smaller side, meaning it will go towards the ammonia side. We will lose nitrogen and hydrogen will produce more ammonia as the system tries to get away from the stress. So reactant side will go down, product side will go up. In other words, we'll say the reaction will go to the right. If you decrease pressure, and I, again, we don't care how they did that, decreased pressure is like saying, telling the gas, OK, I'm going to stop crushing you now. I'm going to let you expand again. And so the system will expand. It'll go towards its larger side. Ammonia will turn into nitrogen and hydrogen because now there's room. So in that case, we'll gain reactant, lose product. The equilibrium will go to the left. What happens to the system if the pressure is increased? They say by adding an inert gas, don't care. If the pressure increases, it'll do the same thing as any other pressure increased. It'll go to its smaller side. We will lose reactants, gain products, because they take up less room. Or we can say the reaction will go to the right. And so in this example, we had four moles versus two moles, but there isn't always a difference. There are some reactions where you have, say, two moles on the left and two moles on the right. And if it's a tie like that, then the system will not care about pressure. If you ever have equal moles of gas on both sides of an equilibrium, then the system will be what we call pressure insensitive. And that means it just doesn't notice pressure. it will not go up or down no matter what you do to the pressure. 
we also say this is what happens with liquids and gases because, or sorry, liquids and solids. Liquids and solids do not respond to pressure very much. They're relatively incompressible because their atoms are already very close together. It's hard to get them any more crowded. And so liquids, solutions, and solids don't aren't affected by pressure in any way. All that matters is how many moles of gas are there. Now there are a couple questions after this that I wasn't able to fit on the screen that are about catalysts, and I'll just get through those fast because the answer Oh, hit my mute for a second, sorry. If we add heat, the system will try to consume that heat, so it will use heat and hydrogen and carbon monoxide. It will make oxygen. It'll make methane. If the pressure decreases, now we care about moles here. We get to count moles of gas. We have two moles of methane and one mole of oxygen. That's a total of three moles of gas on the left. We have two here and four here, a total of six moles of gas on the right. So if we crush this system, it'll go to its smaller side. It'll shift towards the left. Decreasing the pressure, though, means it's like we were crushing it, and now we relax the pressure and let it expand. It'll go towards its bigger side. So if the pressure decreases, we'll get, we'll lose methane and oxygen. Those will unpack into their bigger forms as carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So down on the left, up on the right. And last one. Volume decreasing, if you force something to get smaller, that's equivalent to putting pressure on it. It's like you're crushing it down into a smaller volume. So volume decreases, we can treat exactly the same as pressure increases. Well, OK, I took these numbers down, but we need them again. Three moles, six moles. If you increase pressure, the system is going to crush down to its smaller side. You'll get, you'll lose carbon monoxide and hydrogen and heat, because those take up too much room. And you will produce methane and oxygen. The system will go to the left. All right, here's pretty much the same thing again. What do we get for these changes? C2H4 is ethene. If we increase ethene, the system will use it up. It'll use up ozone. It'll produce formaldehyde and oxygen and heat. So left, down, right, up will be the reaction there. Remember, red is what we do, and then all the blue is the system reacting to it. So the system always goes down on one side, up on the other.
Uh, next one, ozone increases. So here's the stress. Somebody adds ozone. The system will use up ozone and ethene at the same time. It'll produce formaldehyde and oxygen and heat. If we take away high oxygen, O2 decreases. If the system's at equilibrium and then we steal some oxygen, the system will try to replace that oxygen. Let me just make this a little heavier. It'll make replacement oxygen. If you're doing that, you can't help making heat and formaldehyde at the same time. And if you're making those, you must be using up reactants. Temperature increases, meaning we're adding heat. The system will use up heat and oxygen and everything else on the right side, and it'll produce left side. Pressure decreases. How many moles of gas do we have here? Two here plus two here is four. Four here plus one here is five. So there's more gas on the right side. If the pressure decreases, that means we're relaxing the pressure, we're letting the gas expand. It'll go to its bigger side, so it'll go to the right. We'll get more formaldehyde and oxygen. We'll get less ozone and ethene. If the volume decreases, volume decreasing is just like pressure increasing. Volume decreasing means you're crushing the thing to force it to go smaller. And I took those numbers down again. They were 4 and 5. So a crush will make the system go to its smaller side. We'll produce left side and lose right side and we'll lose heat. And the old trick question, what will a catalyst do? Nothing. It will not shift the equilibrium. If you're not at equilibrium, you will get there sooner, but the equilibrium will be in the same place.